All right, hello everyone. My name is Shep. Welcome back to the Witcher Circus. We are back playing against Mr. Meteor Doom. It has been a very long while since we last faced him, and today we are going to be playing the Ultimate Mark team, the Howlers from 135J Man, aka my brother. And it looks like we are going to be playing against sort of a defensive uh, dodge focus stress team. Which is really not what we like to see, I'll be honest with you guys. But um, hopefully, hopefully we can make it work. Now one thing I'm kind of scared of is if I go for this mark, he might just... Um, he might just use Adder's Kiss and then I won't be able to shoot. I feel like that would be a really good play by him if he sees it. But if he goes for that, then I can just pull a character from behind him and, uh, you know, the game goes on. But yeah, we are playing this Mark team with two shooters in the back line, so the Howlers, that's the idea. Then we have the Bounty Hunter here to use Finish him to get those uh, those kills and also Caltrips, as well as the Hound Master to usually mark round one. So yeah, as we saw, he did go for that. Actually, no, I can't go for a, a pop because he'll just Shadow Fight. Well, if he Shadow Fades, I'm going to use Ranging Shot, which is actually going to buff my accuracy for the following rounds. Oh, I hate to see it. I've I've had a few of those happen where you go for an, like a really close to 100% chance of hitting come hitter, because it's a really high base accuracy ability. But I've seen it miss more often than it should. And it really is more often than it should, because it should not miss um, like nearly as much as it does. Like, 81 there, that just ruined the match pretty much. But um, we are still going to try to make this work. So, yeah, as you can see right now, the hit chances are horrendous. <laughs> so there's the 55. I mean, we did go first, which is usually a good thing. But uh, not when the matchup looks like this. Yeah, not when the matchup looks like this. Okay, right now he's probably... Oh, he's probably even going to use regen. No, he's going to go festering right away. Oh, smart. He's exposing himself to an early crit, but I don't think even with a crit right now I do um, 34. Yeah, I do like 29 with a crit, so it wouldn't even be enough to drop that antiquarian since she does have that black diamond mirror. Yeah, so we are making use of the plus 12 accuracy from going last, which is definitely going to help us this match, but oh boy, this is going to be rough. Yeah, this is going to be really rough because this man at arms should be pretty much dead right now, but no, he's just chilling, and that antiquarian, she is, she's far from dead. Uh, yeah, far from dead, because anytime she wants, she can just use Shadow Fade, Protect Me, I mean everything, she has everything. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to make this work, and we're gonna have to figure out a way of making this work. Uh, if I go for this, he stealths. If I go for this, he might guard. Guarding is not a good idea not by him, because I might still get the death blow. I'm gonna go for this, and if he stealths, I get the accuracy buff. So we get to crit 26. Uh, it would have been 29, but we don't get the extra damage from going last either. So now we do that. If he uses uh, Protect Me, I go Caltrips and might get the kill. If he uses Shadow Fate, I go Caltrips and I might get the kill. And then I go Ranging Shot or Hounds Harry and we might just get the kill anyway. Which would be really good. I'm honestly gonna have to win this match um, based on how many death blows I resist because he doesn't have any finishing characters and he doesn't do a lot of stress and he's focusing down my bounty hunter so he's already used an adder skiss and a panic darts on him oh that is an interesting play that is an interesting play so he's disregarding my he's pretty much giving up his antiquarian I think pretty much giving up that antiquarian that is a very interesting play I think first I'm going to go for the Hansari because um, it's kind of like the move that matters least. So, I mean, it, the Hound Master wouldn't do anything else this round that would be very impactful, so we go for the Hansari first. Of course we miss because it's like a 53. Uh, that kind of sucks, but uh, oh well, what can you do? You might go for a pull now. It's only a 50-50 of working. Uh, we take those, actually. We take those. Oh, I could get a crit there. I could get a crit there. I'll leave that for last, though. I'll leave that for last. So this is going to be a 50. And that's a death blow. We see that D pop up. Oh, that is terrifying. So we get the 50-50 death blow. And now we're going to get to act against this uh, against this mark. 
And even if he uses protection right now, he's, he's still very likely just going to take a very big blow to the face. Okay, so that's going to be a Panic Taurus. It's going to do enough damage to drop us to zero. But just as I was saying, he doesn't have enough stress to cause heart attacks. And um, should I heal, actually? Yeah, and he doesn't have any, like, confirmed death blows, so this isn't too bad. Should I heal or should I shoot? I want to shoot. Ow, we, we don't crit. I would have loved a crit, honestly. Unfortunately, we don't crit, but check this out. We have enough DOT that we're actually countering its regen. So that man of arms... <clears throat> oh, excuse me, that was a horrible burp. Excuse me, my fellows. Um, but yeah, that man of arms is uh, pretty much dead. We're just gonna have to get a good sniper shot or aim shot into him, and he is uh, finito, kaput. Who should we use for that purpose? Musketeer or Arbalist? Honestly... I feel like healing first. I honestly feel like healing first. Don't um, don't judge me for it, but I honestly think that healing might be the play. Ought to go for first, even though it sounds very weird, which it does. It does sound very weird because we do have more actions than him, so he's gonna have to use like one action to bring us back down to that store. Because I'm not gonna click my bounty hunter until you know there's no more actions on this side. So he's going to have to use an action to bring us to that store if he actually wants to get that kill. So that could potentially be very good. He goes, he goes for it anyway. I feel like if I were him... Oh, that's actually E. Maybe I didn't consider that too well, but uh, he puts the men at arms back in position 1. He used that Adder's Kiss, which means I could go for a guard dog right now. I could go for a guard dog. And uh, why? He might just go puncture next round. He might just go puncture, or he might not. Yeah, we, we don't know, really. We really don't know. Uh, maybe I did a misplay. I kind of had a confirmed kill there. Let's go for a guard dog. Uh, it's going to stop the immediate death blow, and it's also going to make it so the Grave Robber has to like divert her attention onto that, um, onto that bounty hunter, which is pretty good for us. Yeah, it's definitely pretty good. Also, fun thing that's going to happen, it's the last round of bleed. So after that bleed runs out, he's actually going to start regening again for 1 HP. <laughs> Can't wait for that to happen. Um, who goes first next round? He does, right? He does. We still have to go for this. This is still the best play. We're going to pull. 76. Okay, we hit it this time. He's going to have to use Shadow Fate, but if he uses that Shadow Fate, I can just um, clear his stealth which would be pretty good yeah so we're gonna clear that stealth we're gonna clear the bellow that he just added on hopefully we don't miss a stealth uh we do miss the stealth but on the shield breaker so it's totally fine but yeah that was definitely a very good play by us to actually just pull our grave robber that's one shadow fade gone and she doesn't keep those buffs from being stealth so just uh, awesome value awesome value and obviously she's still marked so if she doesn't uh, act immediately, I might just go for an immediate death blow, which I would love to see, but nah, he's gonna act. Keep in mind he does have punctures, so we can just break this guard whenever he wants. Uh, that would not be too good, to be fair with you guys. Oh, that's gonna be, oh, that's gonna be a Toxin Trickery. Smart play. Smart play, I'm gonna have to say, yeah, pretty smart. What's my hit chance with this pull? Maybe not too good, and that's also my finishing character, so not really what I want to see. Uh, I might go for a heal, actually. You know, just keep stacking those heals. He might not even drop me to this door with the puncture, honestly. I, I doubt it, actually. I feel like he has to get a crit. So since he has to get a crit with that puncture, even if he goes for a puncture and wants to go for a retribution kill, he will be unable to. So this is a really decent situation for us, I'd say. Now if that bellow hits, it's probably gonna afflict us. Yeah, there it goes. So even with the stress taken buffs, uh, we still go afflicted. Okay, that's paranoid. That's, uh, that's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, you can see now he's gonna start regening again. <laughs> that's not too good, is it? No, it really isn't too good. You know what I could go for? Hmm. Wait, any move he does, he moves forward. Puncture, Serpent Sway, Pierce, 
all move forward. He doesn't have Expose or Captivate. Oh, I'm gonna do the brainiest play you've ever seen, guys. This is the brainiest play you have ever seen. Whatever he does, he's gonna move forward and he won't get a death blow. Yeah, whatever he does, it doesn't matter. He's probably gonna go for a puncture on my shield breaker, which is gonna be a 50-50. He already failed one of those, I'm hoping he fails the other. I doubt I do 15 damage with the bola. Oh, that's a crit though. Ah, yeah, the chance increases because of the crit. So that's kind of annoying. Yeah, that is definitely kind of annoying. I really doubt I do enough damage. Maybe a crit does enough. Yeah, we do 10. I would have loved for that to do enough, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd have to be unreasonably lucky for that to actually do enough. Okay, we do 6 to 12, so we're definitely... <laughs> <laughs> 93 hit chance. Oh my man. Oh my man. Okay, we don't talk about that. Alright, we don't talk about that. 93 hit chance. Holy Mary Mother of Joseph. Yeah, that's that's the side you really don't want to see. Okay, I guess that crit heal doesn't really matter too much. Okay, there he goes the puncture. There he goes. That's the 14. I stay alive. Fortunately for us, I'm gonna go for a heal here, so I keep staying alive. Wow, 14? Wow, that's a pretty big heal, not gonna lie. Damn, plus 75 healing received, that's kind of insane. Yeah, this, uh, this musketeer is doing that healing received. Quite good, quite good. Looks like renaming her to Awoo was a good idea. You know, since we're playing the Howlers, right? She's gonna howl. The Howler's Howl. What should this Grave Robber do? Just keep focusing down the, the Bounty Hunter, honestly. Now he might do enough stress now. Oh, now he's gonna change up that focus. He's gonna go for this Arbalest now. Mm, I'm not too sure if that's the play, honestly. Okay, we could go for a Blackjack here. It's a hit chance, it exists. Okay, we do get that blackjack. You might be wondering, well, Shep, why don't you go for the re for the Hound's Harry to counter that uh, regen? It won't be necessary. The regen is gone now. And after I use Sniper Shot, finish him, the Mana Arbs are just gone anyway. So even though we had the absolute most atrocious start of the freaking century, we are actually doing reasonably well here. Yeah, we are doing reasonably well because... Unless Paranoid passes, which I don't think Paranoid actually passes. It doesn't pass, but you can do stupid things. Yeah, for sure. You can you can be unpredictable. Okay, that's only stress. Yeah, you can do like an, a stupid act out, like pulling the Antigrind. You can definitely do that, but he doesn't really have a pass. Okay, this time we don't uh, hit the lucky 2% on that uh, 93. So we do get that death blow, fortunately for us, and that shield breaker is stunned, which is also a boon, for sure. And right now, he doesn't even have a confirmed death blow chance, it's a 55. Yeah, he doesn't get it. Wow. Wow, can you believe it? That is outrageous to be this guy. Honestly, outrageous. We're gonna click here so we can actually heal. We're gonna go for a mark, we're gonna miss. <laughs> 130 accuracy. I mean, we are at that store and we are paranoid. Uh, paranoid doesn't remove dodge, but yeah, yes, 60 dodge. Yeah, yeah, it's understandable. It's honestly understandable. We could go for a. Um, damn, I kind of want to heal with both characters. I want to heal the bounty hunter and I want to heal the musketeer. Uh, and I don't. I want to heal the arbalist, but I don't really have heals for both of them. Mm, what should I do? You, you're gonna heal here, so we don't fall to this door, that's the idea. Because falling to this door is gonna reduce our accuracy, and that's most definitely not what we want. And you're gonna get a stun, there we go. So, even though the mark would be really good, I feel like the chance of getting a stun is just so good that you honestly can't skip out on it. So this is going to be a 62 hit chance, and uh, what do we say to that? We say no, we go for a heal instead, because we don't want him to get a lucky death blow, so every heal we do is just an absolute pain for him, and he only has one action right now because we're just stunning. Blackjack is such a broken ability, I mean, you wouldn't expect a team with the Houndmaster marking to be just as stun heavy as something like a Crusader. 
but it really is. It really is just as stun heavy as a Crusader. So, um, I am gonna preemptively heal that Bounty Hunter, because I feel like this is the best play. He's definitely not gonna go pick to the face, he's losing if he does that. Uh, so that's why we go for that heal, because he's always going to use Shadow Fade. And my answer to Shadow Fade is going to be Ranging Shot. That is most definitely going to be my answer. Because not only does it clear the stealth, it also buffs up my accuracy. So that's the plan we were going for round one. But unfortunately didn't manage to do it, since I think we missed the pull, right? Yeah, something silly like that happened. And right now we're going to go for a Black Jack, which is going to be a 71 crit. Ouch, 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 that's a pretty big ouch. And right now, we are gonna have uh, a chance of just doing a whole lot of pain onto that um, onto that Grave Robber. So it's a 50-50 of doing a lot of damage. And unfortunately, we missed that 50-50. It's pretty much what we can go for right now, it's just those lucky 50-50s. So yeah, as you can see, even though I've suffered three death blow checks, this uh, Bounty Hunter just stays alive, like, perfectly chilling. Okay, we're gonna have to hit her somehow. Yeah, we're gonna have to hit her somehow. Uh, I feel like... Um, maybe just buffing up my accuracy again honestly wouldn't be that bad of a play. Yeah, I'm not even joking. Buffing up my accuracy again. Yeah, we still get the buffs even though we missed both of them somehow. I don't know how you miss like a flare. Yeah, this isn't a flare, it's like a ranging shot. But I don't really understand how you miss a flare. Like, uh, like, you know, reasonably. Doesn't make much sense to me, but oh well. Uh, should I mark first, or should I go for death low? I feel like we do 15 damage, even if we don't, the Hounds Harry can just uh, compensate for it. Ow, we actually don't! Wow, we get a min roll! That could be disastrous for us, but maybe Blackjack does enough. Ah, it does, it does. Oh, and you get the stun as well. Oh, that's just sad. Yeah, that's just quite sad. And now we actually have a pretty decent, a decent hit chance because between the finisher, the grappling mids, and the double accuracy buffs, we have a 79, even against 57 dodge, and we just get that kill. So now it's the shield breaker that can, or the shield breaker that can't, uh, you know, depends on how this goes. But yeah, it's gonna be a 1v4, so... Yeah, that's just kind of difficult. I mean, the Howlers are a really, really competent team. Yeah, unbelievably competent how teams decide how competent this team actually is. Yeah, so that's plus 30 accuracy. Spamming ranging shot, really good idea. Really good idea. Plus 30 accuracy, 73 hit chance. We just hit it, we get the stun. <laughs> this blackjack is literally carrying our match. Yeah, it is totally carrying our match, so you're gonna have to believe that this is just gonna be a matter of time until we actually finish off this shield breaker, so let's move on straight to the next match. Alright, let's get straight into match number two, so it looks like Mr. Meteor Doom did actually do some very interesting team changes. This is quite an interesting team. I was thinking of doing some trick changes, um, namely replacing the Minier Ball on the Musketeer for something that gave her some accuracy. But then I thought if I go against something kind of like Heavy Prot, and I would really love to have this, so I ended up just sticking to the same concept. And it looks like Mr. Meteor Doom is going to be running a Flagellant with Gauntlet of Absolution. I love it, no accuracy buffs, going straight for the Reign of Sorrows. Daring today, aren't we? Fortunately, he does fail one of those bleeds, so it is, um... It could be worse, let's put it that way, it could definitely be worse. We're gonna go straight for a come hither on that occultist, we don't want him to sit comfortably in position 4, that's for sure. We definitely want to knock him out early, even if he doesn't have the, the spaghetti, <laughs> even if he doesn't have the ceiling spaghetti. We do not want him to sit comfortably. Yeah, okay, that's that's actually quite a good outcome for us, not gonna lie. Interesting idea I have here would actually be to guard this musketeer. Because if I do that, she's gonna take no stress, but I might also want to get a blackjack in case uh, the second sniper shot doesn't kill, or if the first sniper shot doesn't actually drop him. Oh, it doesn't. 
ouch, ouch, that is a very big ouch to see the first sniper shot actually not getting that kill. That is a humongous ouch. I am probably going to go for a blackjack. It probably does enough damage. It might not do enough damage. I think it rolls for 3 to 5. We do roll for 5, so that's uh, that's quite handy for us. We do that. We do get that 90% stun, so he can't just go first by the start of next round and just uh, heal himself with the slot machine, which is wonderful. And now I'm going to go for the 55% death blow chance, so quite unusual that you see the Arbalist actually going for the killing shot. I really hope it works, because if it doesn't... Um, well, actually, maybe it's not too bad if it doesn't, since he doesn't go for a guard. Uh, if he had gone for a guard, and um, then he could click that occultist, remove the guard, and then I'd have kind of a hard time breaking through. But uh, yeah, he doesn't do that, so maybe I have less of a hard time breaking through. <laughs> <laughs> I might still have a hard time, but hopefully less of a hard time. So I can tell you already, it's going to be um, absolutely horrendous trying to break through this flagellant. Yeah, just absolutely horrendous for sure. But we are here to do it, so we are going to do it. I could drop a caltrips, but I'd rather have to confirm death. Well, no, so I'd rather not eat a repast crit, because you know it's going to crit. You know it's going to crit, guys. He has that parrying dagger. It's going to crit for 17. Okay, going for that Reign of Sorrows. One good thing here, uh, like really good thing here actually, is that he doesn't have much pass accuracy. He only has the Confessor's Gauntlet. So if it does come to a final 1v1 between the Flagellant and the Houndmaster, I'm going to have a lot of dodge vouching for me. So I would absolutely just love to see that. But um, we'll see. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. He still gets to go first next round. Yeah, he definitely still gets to go first. We're going to mark that Houndmaster. So I can't afford to have him live. So what we're going to do, our game plan here is going to be to heal that Musketeer. And after we heal, she is going to be cleared of bleeds. And she's also going to be the last character acting. So she's going to have plus damage, she's going to have plus accuracy, and she's going to one-shot that Houndmaster. Hopefully. We didn't get the crit last time against the Occultist, which I most definitely did not enjoy. But um, hopefully we get it this time. No, we don't get the crit. 44% uh, crit chance. I feel like my, my shooters today are just not doing what they're supposed to. And why does that matter so much? Well, that matters a lot because next time I shoot him, he's just going to click regen and I'm screwed. Because I'm going to have to shoot him twice. And that's no bueno. That's definitely no bueno. I could wait out his action, though. Yeah, I could wait out his action, honestly. That is something I could most definitely do. It kind of sucks I don't have uppercut. I could make this flagellant pretty much useless for the entire match. Oh well, should have should have thought about that earlier, Shep. Should have thought about that earlier. I'm actually going to guard this musketeer here. It might stop some stress output, uh, because he's definitely not going to hound Harry. And um, the horror won't be enough, uh, considering that we do have that buff now. So hopefully that actually works out kind of reasonably for us. Also, why did he go Vendetta into the Arbalist and not the Houndmaster, which is the character that's actually going to give him some trouble? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I wish I did, but I don't. Uh, who should we go for? Um... Who should we go for here? I could cure that bleed, I could cure this bleed. I feel like curing that bleed is more important at the moment. Let's keep that bounty hunter alive and well, totally chilling. Because the, the Arbalist is still going to take a lot of damage from Reign of Stars anyway. So let's just keep that uh, that bounty hunter alive and well. And we might just get a really good death look here. He is going to go Hans Harry actually. Yeah, we force him to go Hans Harry. Uh, we don't take enough stress. Ooh, it's close, but we don't take enough. We get the crit this time. Oh well, I sure I sure love getting a crit after it is totally necessary. We could go for a 50-50, or we could go for a come hither. Yeah, I really love unnecessary crits. Good job, Arbalist. I mean, Musketeer. Sorry. Ah, uh, this is um, this could be game changing, you know. Either if I go for come hither, or if I go for caltrips. Because the Kamhedra will allow me to use finish him next round, but it, it might just be too slow. I might need his caltrips. I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, we see we see that death blow right there. 
Fortunately, we see that death blow. So now we're applying bleed to the other two characters, and that Hound Master is definitely suffering. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. He's definitely suffering. And uh, so is the Hound Man. He's also taking those bleeds. He's definitely going to go to pass now. That might hurt. It hurts a good amount. So the thing is, right now, the thing is, right now, how the hell am I going to kill this Flash? That's. <laughs> That's the thing, like, he's in, he's firmly in position 1, how the hell am I gonna kill him? Well, maybe we can, like, uh, do a Bola carousel, you know, just Musketeer Bola, Arbos Bola, that, that could be fun. But first we're gonna get rid of this Harryman. Yeah, no matter what happens this round, that Harryman's going. So, I don't care that there's bleeds being stacked on me, I, I honestly don't care, I'm just gonna get rid of that Harryman. So... This Musketeer just got a crit, which actually means she's doing more damage versus marked characters, so... Think about Arbels and Musketeer, and another reason why they're so broken is... If they get a crit, even if you survive that crit, you're not gonna survive the next hit. So now we do 30 fall damage, uh, purely because of that crit, actually. Purely because of that crit, we do just one more damage than strictly necessary, so we can just click here on the Bounty Hunter and voila. That's a kill. So the question now is, can this Flagellant 1v4? <laughs> that, is, that is the question that's being posed here. Uh, can he do it? Can he 1v4? That is, uh, that is the question. So we're going to keep our characters alive, that's for sure. We don't want to suffer any very unfortunate death blows. So we're definitely not going to let that happen. How much dodge do I still have? I still have a lot. He's gonna go for a punish. I honestly am gonna have to disagree with that play. I feel like he has to be doing Reign of Sorrows because it could actually hit two characters at a time. If he does that, he only does 12 stress and I just cure the bleed. So uh, yeah, that's that's really not doing too much for him. It's really not doing too much for you, my man. I could pull a corpse behind him, but then a cultist corpse, when did he die? Was it round two? It was uh, round two, six. Yeah, we're chill, actually. Oh, we're chill. We are chill. Um, I have an idea. Let's pull this corpse. It's a 75 pulling. It actually works. Wonderful. So we pull that corpse. Now we mark. And then we shoot. So the thing is, he still has three exsanguinates. He's definitely going to use them. And he's definitely going to heal, but um, we're still going to be able to shoot him if he doesn't move forward. Because that corpse is only going to go away by round 7, since uh, he died round 2. You might think this isn't very important, but it definitely is important, because this flagellant is just an absolute menace to these characters at the end of the match. Like, it's really fortunate that these corpses are still around, so we're actually able to shoot him and make use of the um, definitely balanced aimed shot synergy with, you know, the Mark and the Iron Sights and Mini Ball. So he's gonna go for that Exsanguinate, probably a very good chance of actually hitting. And right now, we get two shooting chances. Uh, though our characters are afflicted, we don't see any act outs, and that's the crit. I think that's gonna be all she wrote for Mr. Meteor Doom, so, I mean, you run into a team like this, you run into a Mark team like this, uh, yeah, Occultist is not going to do it. <laughs> Occultist is not going to do it. We roll for that stun, do we get it? Unfortunately, no, but I'm going to have to say that it is not going to matter that much. We get a crit heal there, actually. Wow, wonderful. And now this um, this bounty hunter is going to have 100% death load chance, so wham bam, thank you ma'am. Goodbye, Flagellant, so the Howlers stay strong. I mean, it really is a very strong team. Just any four characters assaulted together, are uh, they're done for. They're really going to have a bad time against this team. If you make one mistake, one slip up, I mean, sometimes you don't even have to make a mistake. Sometimes it just gets a lucky crit without a mark. Uh, it is, this team is, is deadly. Deadly. That's, that's the best objective for it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this showcase. And um, I'll see you again another time. Cheers.